Okay, so let's take a look at uh, question B here where <clears throat> we're looking to minimize the cost equation now. So we're not maximizing it. And we're given some different constraints here. So we have uh, equations here, 4x plus 3y is greater than 24. Um, 4x plus y is less than or equal to 16. And then we are also um, constraining ourselves just to be using all positive numbers for the x and y axis. So this is very similar to the first question where we need to plot these equations, okay, and then see what kind of shape or what, so, what sort of boundary um, values that we have. But we're being asked to minimize the cost. So that means um, we want to find the lowest value um, that's going to fit into those equations. So we could start off by doing the same thing that we did before. We have our equation here, 4x plus 3y is greater than or equal to 24. And then we have 4x plus y is less than or equal to 16. And we need to graph those equations. So uh, a step that we could do, again, is just turn these into um, point slope form or uh, slope intercept form equations find the slope, find the y-intercepts, okay, and then plot them. Um, the little difference with this question is some of these numbers are getting a little bit bigger um, in order to plot, so we could do it. Um, so let's just look at well, the first one here. If we were going to change this here, I'm going to rewrite it as 3y is greater than or equal to negative 4x plus 24. Divide every term by 3. So... Um, that will just give us y is greater than or equal to negative 4 thirds x plus 24 divided by 3 is 8. Okay, and then what we can do here is our y-intercept again is positive 8, so that's 8 small squares up. And then we have a slope of negative 4, 3, so that means I have to go down negative 4 and then over 3, okay, and down negative 4 and then over 3. And then we can plot our line, um, as you see, um, would go right there. So another way, though, that we can do it, especially when the numbers get start to get a little bit bigger, is we can use a graphing tool. Okay, so the graphing tool that I like to use and that um, I encourage students to get familiar with is a tool called Desmos. Okay, um, you can get this on the web. So you can just go to the website desmos.com. And it's a algebra graphing tool. So I'm going to flip this over here to, uh, I have this loaded up on my tablet and I'm going to plot these equations and show you how you can, s um, the advantage of doing this is that instead of having to worry about the math in the equations and transforming them, we can just type the equations in and then start to understand to see what we're, we're really looking at here. So I'm going to flip over to um, my Desmos tool. Okay, so when it's up and running here, it basically gives me a, uh, a keyboard entry where I can type in an equation and it will plot it for you on the screen. So if I'm going to do here 4x, so we just type 4x and then we're going to use plus and then 3y. So the variables are there for you already, greater than or equal to 24. Okay, and then the nice thing is, is that it automatically shades and correctly draws the boundary line for that graph. So you can see here that um, we've got our, um, oops, that should be 24, sorry. We've got our, our boundary here for our first line. Okay, and then I can add a second line here. So the second line here was 4x plus y, and that is less than or equal to 16. Okay, so what we have here oops make sure that's 16. okay what we've got here is we're starting to see um where it the two lines are overlapping okay and then we can also plot our sort of our axis constraints so this is x is greater than or equal to zero and then we can have y is greater than or equal to zero so you can just see that all this does is just ensure that we're covering the y the x and y axes so we want to find the area where everything here um, overlaps okay and you can see as i zoom in okay that area where everything overlaps is this sort of triangle here where all the equations um, 
are essentially covering themselves, right? We have one equation going up, we have one equation going down, and then the constraints of the x and y axis. So if I touch on those intersections, so we'll just mark these points as we get along, so you might want to just write these down. First point here is 0, 16. Okay, so that's the first point. The other point here is 3 and a 4. Okay, and then the last point here is 0 and an 8. Okay, and that gives us our shape in which we're going to now apply those coordinates to. Okay, so I can, so this is just an easy way to do it because the graphing is taken care of by the computer and you have more accuracy in finding those, the, the, the overlap of the shape, which sometimes can be a little bit tricky to do when you're plotting it manually. So let's go back to our question here. Okay, and what we want to do is we want to minimize this, this equation here. So I'm just going to erase all this. Okay, because we now have our points. Okay, so we have our points of 0, 16, 3, and 4, and 0, and 8. So again, if we do a little table, we do x, y, and then c. Okay, we want to minimize... Um, our values here. So we'll do 0 and 16. So this is going to be, x is going to be 0, that means 6 times 0 is 0, but 3 times 16 is going to be 48. Okay, and then our next point is 3 and a 4. So 6 times 3 is 18, and 4 times 3 is 12, so that is going to give us 30. Okay, and then our last point here was 0, 8 in that shape. So 0, 8, x is 0, 3 times 8 is 24. So then which, of, which point is going to minimize um, our cost for that, for that function? So we would say that we have a minimum. We have a minimum of, the minimum here is actually going to be 24. Okay, at coordinates 0, 8. Okay, so that's how, that is the combination that would minimize um, that, that function.